so it's been almost a year since my last Rainbow Six Siege video. I think it's been about 355 days, which is a hell of a long time, and it doesn't feel like it's been that long, but obviously it's been almost a year, like I said. And aside from playing one, maybe two games within that time of Rainbow Six Siege, I basically haven't played the game at all. So I've had a year of not playing the game where multiple changes have come in, and honestly the game's changed a lot. This past week I've played an absolute turn of the game and honestly it's basically been all I've done. I've just constantly played this game, I've got the new operators as well because I, I decided just to buy them out because see what they were like. And honestly I can say the game now is just fantastic. In the time I've been away it's seriously gone from strength to strength. So because it's been a year since my last video and because the game is still going I wanted to take a look at what makes it such a great game. Now this is not a detailed video designed to seriously analyse what makes this such a fantastic game. This is really just me giving my two cents about the game in terms of why I think it's so good. So immediately the first thing that's so great about this game is the fact that you know exactly what you're getting into. You know what the gameplay is going to be like but it still changes with every match making it familiar but still very exciting. Now the gameplay is pretty simple, there's always an attacking team, there's always a defending team, but the minor variation in objective forces you to play differently, meaning that every time you're playing the game you're doing something different and you can't do the exact same thing for every game mode. Now Counter-Strike Global Offensive works in the same way but is more serious and raw. Rainbow Six Siege has definitely been aimed at a less hardcore audience compared to CSGO. CSGO is more based around tactical movement and raw mechanics, while Siege is more about using what you have to gain advantage, whether or not that's your gadgets or just gaining information through cameras. In Rainbow Six Siege, the action is quick, highly addictive and extremely intense. Playing Battlefield 1, you just don't get the same feeling of excitement, that kind of buzz you get when playing Rainbow Six Siege. A good example is playing Battlefield, constantly what happens is you'll run with a group of people, chuck a few grenades over the top, give a few shots, and that's about it. If you die, it doesn't matter. Playing Rainbow Six Siege, if you're the last one with two or three people left, you've got this seriously intense sort of feeling about it. It really, really makes you quite nervous. All the various operators allow you to change how you play the game and how the game works. Depending on what operators you choose for your team or what operators the opposing team chooses, you might go with a completely different plan of attack or defense. And of course, the constant addition of new maps and operators for free has done a lot for the game. By constantly providing free updates and DLC to everybody, not only the fan base that's willing to pay, you can keep the fan base together as well as draw in new players because there's a constant change, there's constant updates. Somebody looks at the game and goes, I can buy the game once, not have to buy any season pass if I don't want to, and honestly I'm going to get all the changes, all the maps and all the operators. And the constant adaption means the game is getting better and better each time. Some of the time they update the game in the sense that it doesn't make it better, it just changes how it feels, trying out something new, making people change. They've also added a few additions to the maps and changed a few things about the maps since our last play, which was really strange to me at first. I didn't quite realise until after some time. But like I said before, all the DLC is completely free. If you want to unlock the operators, there is a hell of a lot of grinding, and honestly there's no way you could do it just sort of snap at the finger, you'd really have to work hard at it. But it's still entirely possible to unlock all the DOS operators and all the skins without spending a penny. Having no paywall anywhere in the game has an absolute turn for keeping the player base alive as well as drawing in new players who like the idea of never paying for DLC. And of course if you want to you can unlock separate operators without having to pay for the entire DLC. Sometimes in Battlefield or in Call of Duty, if you want just the gun, you can't buy just the gun. You have to buy the whole DLC, and that's kind of annoying in some sense, you know. If you wanted to go out and just get one operator from Season 2 or Season 3, or hell, even Season 1 of the DLC, then obviously you can go up, buy the credits, and just buy that single operator. And obviously they now have the, the packs in the game for getting skins, but if you want to buy just one skin, you can still do that. Basically all the skins are available to purchase, and obviously they don't apply to all the weapons, but there are universal skins that will go on every weapon. Now lastly, I think the constant support and updates that have been made almost monthly basically means that the game always feels fresh and is always improving. And like I said before, minor updates to the UI and additions to new gadgets and, you know, changing up gadgets, giving this character a new gadget before and taking away one they had uh, originally, basically keeps the game interesting. Obviously the UI and the gadgets are not the reason to play the game, but changing these minor little features can definitely, like I said, keep it fresh, keep it interesting, and really make you want to play much more of the game. 
So now Apex Exceeds is almost three years old and it's still growing in terms of fan base, the pro scene and obviously in terms of the updates and the content that's coming to the game and historically most games of us will see their peak directly after launch because people pre-order the game, everyone buys it, maybe a week after they see the biggest boom of player base. But Rainbow Six Siege completely changed that, seeing as the game was released, then began to grow, eventually reaching its peak, I think about a year or two after its initial release, which is absolutely crazy to think about, if you think about a game coming out, not being so popular, and then getting extremely popular, that's really kind of strange. There are still a ton of booms to be made, and they have recently started to do things in terms of banning players for cheating, uh, and abusive language of course, and honestly I can see Rainbow Six Siege being extremely popular in a few years time. Possibly even joining the ranks of games like CSGO in terms of a game that's been around for years and is really based on a simple formula and the update that comes to the game or the new game that gets released is basically just a reskin with a few more additions. Now personally I would say that Rainbow Six Siege is definitely one of the best FPS games released in the last 10 years. Games like Battlefield 4, Battlefield 3, Battlefield 1, all the games that I play more commonly are very good games but are basically designed to be you play it for 3 years, chuck it away. Rainbow Six Siege feels like it was made to be constantly adapting, constantly getting better and honestly I think that sort of attention to detail is what makes it such a good game at its core. So like I said, almost 3 years after its release the game is still giving us tons and hopefully Rainbow Six Siege has tons more to give us. Now hopefully you enjoyed the video, and hopefully you'd like to see me play more Rim Six Siege, because it's a game that I'd really love to do more videos on, uh, and I'd like to do more live commentaries as well. I imagine the next video being another Siege video, regardless of how well this one does. Eventually I will get back to the Battleford content, but it's nice to play something else while the new game is just about to come out and the old game is dying off. So if you would like to see some more Rainbow Six Siege content, please leave it down below in the comments and I'll be sure to do some more videos. Like I said, the next video probably will be Rainbow Six Siege video and will hopefully be out next weekend. Regardless, hopefully you guys did enjoy it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.